Hey, Alex, uh, one, of, one actually started in the first half there. Uh, clearly, the whole team was struggling on both ends. Uh, you managed to go five for five. Uh, what were you seeing? How were you able to contribute that way? Uh, and uh, and what, what was the level of significance that you thought that had? Um, you know, I was just trying to be aggressive uh, to score because I think they were playing. Excuse me. Not in a, you know, maybe not in a disrespectful way, but they weren't playing me and they weren't playing some of our guards because they were so worried about AD. Um, so, you know, I kind of, I got a couple layups in transition, I think, um, open three on a kick out that I knew I was going to have, um, and then just shot ready in the corner on the other one. Uh, you know, just, you know, doing what I do, being, uh, opportunistic, thought a couple of them could have been, uh, and one opportunities, you know, it's, it's, it's the playoffs, it's more physical. Everything's going to be a little more, uh, touch and go. So, um, just, you know, fortunate to obviously be whatever I was for four or five, five, um, especially when, you know, we weren't playing great offensively in the first half. You know, Alex, just considering what your story is uh, from, you know, undrafted to where you are now, of course, you started game six of the finals last year. So some of that isn't new, but to play 30 minutes a game like this, to be counted upon, to get some of the actual box score stats in addition to uh, the usual contributions, what, what does that kind of thing mean to you in the context of all this? Um, I don't know. I'm really just trying to win another championship, man. You know, I don't, I don't think too big picture until it's over with. Uh, just love playing basketball. You know, we got a good, good ass team. Like I told you a couple of weeks ago, uh, and and I'm just competitive, man. I like to play basketball. Um, the energy in the stadium was great tonight with the fans back. Uh, you know, having people sit courtside, um, fans cheering and timeouts. Uh, I just, you know, I kind of felt that energy and and. Um, I was a little anxious before the game during the national anthem because I was just, I was so juiced up. I was ready to go. Um, the atmosphere was great. So trying to calm myself down, but then obviously came out and played well. So um, I think it's just part of my progression. You know, I'm, I'm going to keep trying to get better and better and better. And part of that is being aggressive to, to score. And, and a lot of times that'll set up my pass and, and good opportunities for my teammates. So, um, you know, I, I don't really think too much big picture to answer your first question. You know, I'm really just trying to, Trying to win 16 more games. Dave? Alex, what have you had to do? And I know you don't like to really talk about injuries or you'll play through them, but what have you had to do to get that foot right to be able to uh, contribute the way you you have uh, over the weekend and then tonight? Just rest. You know, I missed a couple games. Um, coach, coach sat me out for the Indiana game, which, you know, hindsight is probably a great idea because I was fresh tonight and, and uh, for the New Orleans game. And it was good just to rest it, just let it heal. It's just a little bruising. And I mean, this time of year, you know, you can get a bruise on your elbow, on your uh, on your shoulder, your, your thigh. And mine just happened to be on my foot. So, um, you know, just resting, being ready to go, doing the proper treatment, whatever I need to do to be ready. Because, I mean, you know, West is a gauntlet of guards starting tonight with Steph. And then, you know, obviously with our next round matchup, Book and CP, it's going to be a, it's going to be a handful. Dan? Alex, you guys have played, obviously, a lot of um, important games since last March when the season was shut down. Um, what was it like to play a big game in sort of an atmosphere that matched it? You kind of touched on it a little bit. How noticed was it throughout kind of the game, the energy and the flow? And, and I guess, did it feel differently than, than any of these other big games you guys have played in uh, where the environment was so sterile? Yeah, definitely. Um, it's no bubble out there. You know, 8,000 fans, 20,000 fans, um, 2,000 fans. It's a difference. Uh, but, yeah, it is It is nice, you know, making a shot, having a good run, going calling a timeout, and everybody stands up and is cheering. That's just it's positive energy for your team, and it feels more like traditional basketball. You know, it feels like we're getting back to where uh, we used to be with fan interaction and, and having crowds there. And, you know, it just adds a – it adds a different dynamic to the game. You know, it's why we love sports. Fans fans make sports great. And, um, playing on the road, quieting fans when you play play big games or have big shots, and then obviously at home, you know, having them cheer for you is great. Kyle? Alex, what role, if any, do you have um, as a returner from a championship team and kind of talking to the bench guys who maybe didn't get so much run tonight or didn't get any run tonight? And, and kind of preparing them for a run where, you know, you're going to deploy different lineups and different groups for different different uh, looks and teams you're facing. 
Yeah, honestly, having, I mean, having a playing game might be a blessing in disguise for us just because it's an opportunity for us to, um, you know, I'm, I'm tentative to say this, but it, 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 it wasn't a win or go home game. I mean, we treated it like that, but at the end of the day, if we lost, we would have had another game to play and get in. But, um, you know, just being able to go through this experience where, you know, it's, it's basically a do or die game and having the new guys feel that, 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 uh, that mentality, you know, playing every possession like it's your last, being locked in, uh, the ups and downs of the game, you know, answering back to other teams' runs, you know, stuff that takes championship DNA and championship mindsets to win. Um, you know, it's good for them to get their toes wet in that and kind of kind of experience that with us as a team. Uh, I think it's going to be good for us going forward. Bill? Alex, I know you said that you guys are a, a good-ass team, and so obviously confidence is not a, a problem on your guys' end right now, but I'm just, I'm just wondering, you know, there are a number of factors with this season that, you know, you know, seven seed going into the playoffs, no team from there has ever won a championship. Um, you know, you've, you've had the injuries. Um, what does a win like this do to set the tone for what you guys are trying to do over the next couple of months, and how can it kind of galvanize uh, this group with kind of what lays ahead? Yeah, you know, kind of piggybacking off of um, my last answer, it's just, it's a good first experience for us. You know, um, we got guys that have played in the, the playoffs before, um, but they haven't played with, you know, the pressure of being a defending champ or the pressure of playing for the Lakers or whatever you want to call it, right? So so there's a, there's a, there's just a different mindset you have to have going through the playoffs that I learned last year that I had great, great vets that, that, taught me and, and gave me examples and, and great coaching staff that guided us through it too. So um, for me, I'm trying to, I'm trying to pull those guys along. Um, you know, I reminded a couple guys today, I was like, like, this is why we're here all year. This is what we play for. Like this two months is the reason that we're on the Lakers. The reason that we're here with LeBron and AD and our coaching staff, like this is do or die. Like this is why we play the game. Um, and I also talked about finding ways to win games. You don't play perfect. You know, that's part of the, 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 they talk about the glory at the end of the road when you host the, hoist the trophy and the parade and, and celebrating the winners. But, you know, the grind and, and, and the grit that it takes to get there is, is something that can't be overlooked. You know, fighting through bad games, uh, trying to find wins when you don't play perfect, that's, that's what it takes to win championships. Last question, Jim Alexander. Yeah, Alex, um, AD talked about how the guy seemed a little hesitant in the first half. Is that, was that sort of surprising or is it maybe a consequence of the fact that this is such a new thing and, and it's, you're, you're trying to, trying to figure out how this, the, how to handle the play in, especially since it's not, it's more of a game six than it would be a game seven. Yeah. You know, I'm not sure if I know the answer to that. Um, I think, I think, from my perspective, it looked like we were almost just trying to play too perfect, you know, instead of just going out there and kind of letting it hang and and and, and lying, like taking the results with, with whatever they were. Um, I think we were just trying to execute too much. And, um, you know, the Warriors last game was essentially their first playing game, right? They played Memphis and, and it was a, you either get to play as the eight seed or the nine seed and it's a little easier if you're the eight. So um, I think they came in and, and already had that, you know, dip their toes in the water last game and they came out and knew their game plan and were locked in. So uh, I think they had a little bit of an edge on us. Um, and then, like I said, I think, you know, we tried to, we tried to force feed AD a little too much in the beginning. And, and that's probably just us, uh, us, you know, not, not taking advantage of what's in front of us and trying to play too perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All set, Alex. Thank you. Thanks, guys.